Hello everyone, I'm going to be doing a tutorial today. Um, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a rose. And um, what we're going to use is a flat brush. This one is a Royal Majestic. A Filbert brush, which is a local no number six. On oh, the one stroke is a three quarter brush. And a Mark Reed number two. Okay, and you're going to need a black and a white. So I've got Diamond FX white and Diamond FX black. I'm also going to be using... Um, tag snake one stroke which I'm going to be using for leaves and for the rose itself um, I'm going to use I will be using berry which is also another tag one stroke I'm using this one because it's more widely available around um, USA and even UK so what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to start off by loading up this one stroke. Now this is, this is going to be quite difficult really because um, I'm holding the camera with the other hand. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to load up my one stroke brush. With this one stroke cake. Load it up well. So there you go. Now what I'm going to do, you you want five petals, just so you can tell that it's obviously a flower or a rose. Now two of them need to be bigger, and the other three will need to be smaller. Now they don't need to be perfect, because um, roses or flowers, nature is never perfect. So, if I've got that, yep, got that on camera, so I'm going to start off with the two bigger ones. So just squiggle, flick up, squiggle, background, pull in. And the next big one. So squiggle, pull up, squiggle, pull in. And now the three smaller ones. Same technique, but just smaller. Okay, and if you need to, just fill in the areas that I've got no paint on. I'm doing this with the edge of my brush. I'm not being too rough. Okay, and if you need to, just load up your brush again. I will be doing a video on how to do one stroke. It takes a little bit of time to get used to the consistency because you want it like you want to load it up enough that it's wet but not too wet or it won't glide on the skin. Now the next step is you do um like a C shape or an upside down U. Like so, and then a U shape. Now, what I've done just there is what people do to sort of create a normal rosebud. And also, you may notice that I've used a darker colour on the outside. Um, most people would say that's wrong, but for me, I prefer putting the light, um, the lighter colour on the inside and the darker on the outside. It's just because it makes the design look a bit more bold. Now. To complete this bit of the rose, um, I'm going to touch down the tip, the sides with the darker colour onto the end of the rose and you pull in and you do the same on the other side so I've just changed the angle and just do a couple more like so. Now you can leave it at this step if you're doing something really quick but if you want to take it to the next level with the outlines and etc this is what I do 
I'll just grab in my um, Mark Reed number two brush, loading it up with the Diamond Effects Black. You don't want it too wet, but you don't want it too dry, so you just want it like a normal consistency. Now I'm just going to outline, oops, just going to outline um, the rows. Now you want these sort of pointy bits because um, if you look at real roses they do tend to have the little pointy bits on the leaves. But you don't want too many of them. Okay. So that's the outline. Now I'm going to do the inside outlines which is just here. So I'm just going to quickly do like a C shape here and a C shape that way. Just want to create the middle of the rose there. And from here I'm just going to do the same sort of petal effect. Now don't add too many of those petals, just add enough where it looks sort of realistic at the same time. Like that, okay. Now you can leave it at this stage, or you can take it again to the next level. So I've just wet my brush, you don't want it too wet. So just wipe it off a little bit, you just want it slightly damp. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull in the black outline in some areas just to give it like a bit of, um, I don't know what you would call it really, just so it just looks like a more realistic as a petal. I'm just going to grab my filbert brush, which is completely dry. I'm just going to blend that into the petal. Don't do it to all the petals because it just looks too much, too overcrowded and it sort of loses like how soft a rose usually is. Because you usually think of roses as like something delicate. So I've done two petals so far, you can see what sort of difference it makes. Oops. <laughs> Swoops. Okay, I'm going to do leaves there so I shouldn't really wipe my brush there. You don't want the brush too wet because then it will start picking up the colour from underneath. I'm just going to carry on doing like blending the outline into the petals.
Now the reason I've not picked up dry black paint onto the brush and then adding it onto the petals is because it sort of becomes too harsh and you just want like a really delicate blend there so you don't want too much. Okay. So I'm just going to do it to that outside petal as well. And the reason I like doing the outline as well is because it sort of start, it gives it a bit more um, shape, especially when you, if you like do one of the strokes a bit wrong or you know you can just sort of change it back into making it look how you wanted it to look. So I'm nearly done. So that's about, I think that's all I'm going to do. Actually, I'm just going to add a little bit more. I don't, you know, I know I always add in like a, a bit more, but sometimes you should just stop. Just take a minute, step back, and look at your design. Just because you don't want to add too much. Or it becomes like it starts looking a bit fake. I've always struggled to do roses, but this is one I'm sort of happy with, so that's why I'm uploading it. Um, and a lot of people have requested to see one. I'm not saying this is the best rose you can do, so please don't think I am. But it sort of helps you practice the technique as well. So there you go, that's my rose. Now to take it even further, as I said I will be using the one stroke um, snake, which is a tag. Um, I'm going to use my one stroke brush again, which is a three quarter brush. I'm just going to load that up. Actually, I'm really sorry. I'm not using this brush. I forgot. <laughs> but I used this Donna Dewberry. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it says it's a number 12. But that's in like a Donna Dewberry brush sort of number. I think it's more like a quarter. Like one quarter brush. So it's perfect size for doing... Um, leaves because you don't want them too big okay so I'm just going to load that up really well now I like using the snake one because it's got like dark green in it so it has a great outline already and you don't have to do an outline okay so I've loaded it up and what I like to do, I'd like to do two pe two um, leaves on one side and then one leaf on the other side. So I'm going to do two on the top. So I don't know how's best to show you guys. Okay. So you just squiggle, flick, squiggle back in. So 
so that's like one leaf. And with the other leaf we do the same, so squiggle, flick out, squiggle, back in. And these are amazing because you don't have to do anything like too fa fancy, it just sort of looks great. So do another one, squiggle, 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 pull out. And then you can squiggle, 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 pull out. And you can use the darker end, just to add a quick flick of a line, just like that. I have done it on these, but you can't really see it on the camera because the paint's still quite wet. Okay? And then, just to take it even further, you can add an out like a shadow I forgot I was going to do all this when I started recording so <laughs> I've got all these new things I'm going to be doing so if I just load up a little bit of black onto the brush this is a mark read number four so if I just put a little dot here to show you what I do on the back of my hand I just water that down into a colour I'm happy with to use as a shadow Okay, I'm sort of happy with that colour. Okay, so it's really watered down, as you can see. Now, if, I, if the light's shining in from this way, all my shadow is going to be at the bottom, which is where it looks best. So, if you just do everything under that shadow... That wasn't quite dark enough for me. I just add a bit more black and watered that down. So just follow the shape of what is there. I've asked for your best guideline. If the light, light's shining this way, the shadow will not be on that leaf there. Okay. You can make this as dark or as light as you want, but if it's too light you can't see it. If it's too dark, it loses its feel. Okay. I've just done this a little bit darker than I usually would just because I want you guys to see it on the camera like what I'm doing and just a bit on that side as well So there you go, that's my 3D rose. You can add like little white highlights if you want to, but make sure you blend them out. So you can just sort of add a bit there, grab the same filbert brush, you know, just blend it in. But don't do it to every leaf. You still want it to look realistic, okay? So you can just start, sort of um, add highlights like that, but make sure you blend them in, okay? So I hope this tutorial helped you. I'm going to upload this onto YouTube, so please um, rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any requests, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you. Let me know what you think about the video. Um, and that's about it. Thank you for watching. Bye.